I welcome you all in this video. In this video, I am going to talk about the design procedure of knuckle joint. So in this procedure, we are going to see the steps involved in the design process of knuckle joint. Now in this design process, our ultimate aim to find out the dimensions of knuckle joint and to check these dimensions for safety against the stresses. So let us start with this design procedure. So this is the step number one in the design procedure of knuckle joint. So step number one is calculate the diameter of each rod using following equation. Now this diameter of rod is denoted by capital D and it is the same for fork as well as I. So for this we have to refer the equation that we have derived in the stress equation of knuckle joint. So this is the article stress equation for knuckle joint that we have studied in the previous video lectures and in that video lecture we have uh, talked about the tensile failure of rods and for the tensile failure of rod we have derived the equation of tensile stress in the rod which is given by sigma t is equal to p upon pi by 4 d square. So we have to use this equation we have to use this equation sigma t is equal to p upon pi by 4 d square which gives us the tensile stress in the rod. So we can write the equation of tensile stress in the rod sigma t is equal to p upon pi by 4 d square. Now from this equation we have to find out this diameter of rod capital D. So if you take this on LHS we can write this equation as square root of 4p upon pi into sigma t and this is the equation which gives us the diameter of each rod that is diameter of rod for i as well as fork where where this capital D is the diameter of rod in mm sigma t is equal to permissible tensile stress for rod material it is in newton per mm square and capital p is the external load in Newton. So we, from this equation we can find out this diameter of rod and for that purpose we have referred the equation of tensile stress in the rod which we have derived in the previous article of stress equation for knuckle joint and that equation was sigma t is equal to p upon pi by 4 d square. Remember here very important point while calculating this sigma t that value you have to put here that is nothing but the permissible tensile stress for rod material that you have to take equal to sigma t is equal to SYT upon FS so where this SYT is the yield strength in tension for a rod material in Newton per mm square and this FS will be given. So this equation you have to use if the rod material is a ductile and if, we, if it is brittle we have to replace this SYT by SUT and FS will be given differently for a brittle material. So remember this point. So this equation is for ductile material. For brittle material we have to replace this SYT with SUT. Just now we have seen the equation to find out this diameter of each rod that is capital D that is diameter of this fork and diameter of this I. So this both the diameters are same that is capital D and its equation is under root 4p upon pi into sigma t. Now the next step is to calculate the enlarged diameter of each rod. Now if you look at this diagram of knuckle joint so this is the diameter of rod and this is the enlarged diameter of rod on the both the side. So this is denoted by capital D1. So this is capital D1 and this is also capital D1. So we have to calculate this diameter of rod 
that is enlarged diameter of each rod that is denoted by capital D1 by using empirical relation or standard relation and that relation is given as capital D1 is equal to 1.1 times of diameter of rod so D1 is equal to 1.1 times of diameter of rod where capital D is equal to diameter of rod in mm so in this way we can find out this enlarged diameter of rod now the third step is to calculate the dimensions a and b now this is the third step now look at this diagram what is a and what is b so this is a fork and the thickness of this top fork end is a and bottom fork end is small a so that means small a is the thickness of each end of fork whereas this small b is the thickness of this i so this is nothing but the thickness of i so a is the thickness of fork end and b is the thickness of i end and these uh, dimensions are obtained directly from standard relation and that relation is small a is equal to 0.75 times of capital D where capital D is the diameter of rod and B is equal to 1.25 times of diameter of rod where you can write here capital D is equal to diameter of rod in mm so with this step you can calculate the thickness of this fork end and thickness of this eye end now the step number four is calculate the diameter of pin that is small d based on shear stress and bending stress now remember here in this step we will get two values of diameter of pin that is small d first is based on shear stress that is tau and second is based on bending stress that is sigma b and out of these two values we have to select the maximum value so it is a very important point here out of these two value select the diameter of pin which is maximum so out of that two values we have to select the diameter of pin which is maximum so first of all we'll see how to find out the diameter of pin based on shear stress and in this diagram you can see this is the pin and whose diameter is small d so the diameter of pin this is a small d which is inserted into the common hole of this fork end and eye end so in order to find out the diameter of pin based on shear stress we have to refer the stress equations for knuckle joint article in that we have studied the failure of pin under shear stress that is we have studied the shear failure of pin and in this we have seen that this is the pin which is subjected to loading like this p at the middle region p by 2 at the free ends and because of that it will fail this pin will fail in this way so this is a double shear failure of pin and for that this double shear failure of pin we have derived the equation in that strict equ equations that is tau is equal to p upon twice into pi by 4 d square so this equation we have to use here to find out the diameter of pin so i can write this equation here so shear stress in the pin can be given as tau is equal to p upon twice into pi by 4 d square so from this equation we have to take a d small d on the lhs which is nothing but the diameter of pin so just take this small d on the lhs so that we can get the simplified equation as this twice p under twice p upon pi into tau so this is the equation of this this is the equation to calculate the diameter of pin where where this p is nothing but the external load applied and this tau is nothing but permissible shear stress permissible shear stress for p 
spin material in newton per mm square now remember that how to find out this permissible shear stress already we have discussed in the previous lecture but still remember here tau we have to calculate that is permissible shear stress as ssy upon fs where ssy is this ssy is given as 0.5 syt upon fs as it is so syt will be given to you fs will be given to you just we have to put this value of syt and fs here so that we can get the value of tau and once you get the value of tau we have to put here p will be given so we, the, we, we can calculate this diameter of pin easily if uh, the some, sometimes in case uh, if the material is a uh, brittle then we have to replace this syt by syt uh, but for here this pin uh, generally the material will be ductile so we have to use this equation uh, remember that if the distortion energy theory is uh, we have to use then according to distortion energy theory according to distortion energy theory this equation changes a little bit that means tau is equal to ssy upon fs this equation is same but ssy instead of writing 0.5 syt we have to take as 0.577 syt upon fs as it is and this equation is as per this equation is as per maximum shear stress theory this equation is as per maximum shear stress theory so remember these two points to find out the maximum shear stress for pin now the next part is the design of pin based on bending stress that is sigma b so for that purpose we have to refer the stress equation that we have derived for pin that means we have derived this already uh, bending stress equation for pin under this article bending failure of pin and this is the equation of this bending stress so bending stress sigma b is equal to 16 p into bracket a by 3 plus b by 4 upon pi d cube so we have to use this equation here in order to find out the diameter of pin based on bending stress so let us use this equation here so therefore the bending stress in the pin is given by equation sigma b is equal to 16 p into bracket a by 3 plus b by 4 upon pi into d cube so from this equation we can get the value of this diameter of pin small d so we have to take this small d on the lhs so if you take this small d on the lhs we can get the equation as this like this so cube root into bracket 16 p a by 3 plus b by 4 upon pi into sigma b so this is the equation of d that is diameter of pin based on bending stress so in this way we can calculate the diameter of pin small d based on bending stress where where the small d is the diameter of pin p is the external force applied a is equal to thickness of fork end b is equal to thickness of i end and sigma b is equal to permissible bending stress for pin material in newton per mm square and as if you remember uh, we have taken one separate lecture on permissible stresses how to find out permissible stresses for uh, different materials under different loading conditions so in that i have explained that this permissible bending stress is always equal to permissible tensile stress and permissible tensile stress we know that it is calculated as syt upon fs where this syt is nothing but the yield strength in tension and fs is nothing but the factor of safety so in the numerical you will be given the value of syt you will be given factor of safety so you can easily calculate this permissible bending stress 
permissible bending stress we have to put here this p will be given to you a and b you have already calculated in the step 3 and you can put the value of a and b from the previous steps you can put the value of p you can get this value of sigma b from this equation and you can easily calculate this diameter of pin so you will get here two values of uh, d first based on shear stress and second based on this bending stress so we have to select the maximum value of pin from about two values so we have to write here note select the maximum value of value of diameter of pin from above two values so this is very important point we have to select the maximum value of diameter of pin d from about two values one value we get from based on shear stress and second we get it from bending stress so this is about the step number four